House prices cannot continue to keep going higher and higher. That's all I keep hearing from everybody. Brian, if house prices keep going up like this, nobody's gonna be able to afford them. And it took me back to something. I was at a digital conference in December and somebody told me something and there was somebody that I really respected and said, Brian, believe it or not, house prices can actually go up and they can become more affordable. So it triggered something around me. How the heck can something go up in price yet become more affordable? So I started doing some math and really diving into it. So I want you guys to follow me on this because it's gonna blow your mind on how this actually works. So follow me over here. Let's say in 2020, in February, we had a house price of $500,000, okay? And we looked and said, okay, with about 10% down at the current market rate, which was about 3.5% at this time, 3.5%, what was that approximate principal and interest payment? So put 10% down on a $500,000 home, you're gonna be at a principal and interest payment of about $2,020 a month, just principal and interest, right? now. Taking a median income roughly around here in Southern California, down in Riverside County, about $7,000 a month of a gross household income. So, okay, let's say between February of 2020 and February of 2021, house prices here went up 10%, okay? So we now have a $550,000 house price. Now, wages go up too, but wages go up, let's gonna use something bare, 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 bare minimum, and let's just use the cost of living adjustment. Now the cost of living adjustment, almost at pretty much almost at all government jobs, is around three to 4%, depending on where you're at. So at 3%, now to blow your mind a little bit, believe it or not, week over week for the years, comparing 2020 and 2021 for this week, wages went up 7.7%. Now mind you, yes, a lot of people have been affected. I am not doubting that a lot of people have been affected by this, but there's also a good portion of individuals that are still employed, that are still wanting to buy homes, and there's so many of them when you combine the massive demographics of all the individuals that are reaching home buying age right now. And their wages as that model home buyer have actually gone up 7.7% year over year. But I don't wanna use that. I wanna use just 3%. So let's say Bob over here makes seven grand a month and Bob gets a 3% raise. Now, if I was to tell you, hey, is it possible if Bob gets a 3% raise but I jack his home price up 10% on him that it would actually become more affordable? Immediately, no, how is that possible? How are you gonna raise the price of something that's $500,000 by 10%, raise 50 grand and only give him a measly 3% raise? How is that, it makes no sense. Well, it does, you know why? because Bob's not using all of his income to make his house payment, right? I'm gonna show you here. So if he gets a 3% raise on seven grand, his new monthly income is $7,210. Now, let's compare to things at February of 2021. What are interest rates? I'm gonna use 2.875% interest rate. House price goes up by 10, 10%, so $550,000 house, same 10% down. What does that principal and interest payment look like, right? So financing 90% of $550,000, at 2.875 instead of three and a half. What does that payment look like? $2,053 a month. So let's compare this. Hmm, his house price went up by 10%. Yes, his interest rate did drop a little. I'll get to something in a minute where we don't see that. And his payment only went 33 bucks a month. His house price went up by 10%, but his payment only went up by 33 bucks. Well. Bob just got a $210 a month raise. He just got a 3% raise, okay? That's all he got. Well, guess what? What do you think? That Delta, okay, payment goes up 33 bucks, but you get a $210 raise. Guess what? Bob can afford that house quite a bit easier, right? He's got a bigger Delta between his payment and his income now. Now, let's play devil's advocate. Now, let's do it again. Let's say, you know what? Hey. Price is gonna go up another 10% next year. Now, I don't think they're gonna go up that much, but let's just be devil's advocate. Now that $500,000 house in 2020 is now 605,000 bucks. We're gonna put the same 10% down on that. And this time we're gonna say rates are gonna tick back up because I drew, truly believe rates are gonna be probably about that three and a quarter range this time next year. So now rates are at three and a quarter percent. So now he's financing a lot more house. He's buying $105,000 more house, okay? and he's putting the same 10% down. Okay, what's his payment? $2,369 principal and interest. Mind again, does not include taxes, insurance, payment. I just wanna show principal and interest because that's what matters. Principal interest, 2,369 bucks. Well, let's go over here and we're not gonna use that 7.7 .7 wage rate increase. I don't wanna use that. I'm gonna use a measly 3% cost of living adjustment. 3% raise per year. 
Okay, what does that income look like? Well, his, now his income goes to 7,426 bucks, give or take. So let's compare that to right back in 2020 and say, okay, huh. His payment from here to here went up a total of 349 bucks. You follow me on that, right? 2020 to 2,369. So his payment went up 349 bucks. All right, it's mortgage payment. Now, what does income go up? 7,000 to 7,426 bucks. His income went up 426 bucks. Look, about 75 bucks more in his pocket at the end of the month. So that's what you guys have to understand. When people keep complaining about, oh, house prices are becoming unaffordable, there's no way anybody's gonna be able to afford it. You have to understand a couple things. One, interest rates are gonna remain low. Two, wage increases do occur. And even though house prices are growing faster than wage percentages, you have to understand somebody is not using all of their income every month to pay that house payment. So if you look at that, we do that delta, that delta increase, the percentage increase of that mortgage payment is going up. It can go up at a higher percent. Think about it. If this mortgage payment went up $2,020 by 10%, puts us at 2,200. If he's getting a wage increase of 3%, 3% of seven grand is a bigger number. Seven grand is a bigger number, meaning people's incomes are greater than their house payments. So because interest rates are staying low, house prices can continue to go up. Here at our affordability index in Riverside County, we're sitting at about an affordability index of 103, 104. Okay, what that means is the median income can afford the median house price with 20% down 100% of the time. So we have an over affordability index. So we have room for prices to continue to grow as long as wages continue to grow up. And wages even at a two to 3% increase per year can easily handle a 10% price increase as long as interest rates don't rise with it. So don't make the mistake that I did and thinking that if house prices go up by 10%, there is no way people are going to afford it because that is simply wrong and you wanna educate both yourself and your clients on.